Thank you for thank you for, for giving me the floor. My name is uh, Marijn Hugé. I uh, represent the Clean Shipping Index as a, as a director. <coughs> Clean Shipping Index was developed in Sweden as a, as a sort of a tool for transport buyers so that they can really choose for the best available ships on the market when it comes to uh, environmental performance. So with the aim to really create a market demand for ships with beyond legal compliance uh, environmental performance. So I hope this uh, sheds a little bit of a, a positive light to, uh, <coughs> to the whole issue of stricter regulations uh, as well. I remain seated for three more minutes because I will show you a video animation uh, first. Uh, take about three minutes. That explains what the Clean Shipping Index uh, is about. After that, I have uh, a couple of more slides to, uh, to show. Um, so there we go. The Clean Shipping Index is a business-to-business -business tool for cargo owners to select clean ships and quality ship operators. Transport buyers use it to calculate and minimize their environmental footprint. It's an online tool for cargo owners to enable them to make informed, sustainable choices when picking a shipping company. People all around the world are becoming more aware of our global environmental problems. In their role as consumers, they demand more sustainable products and services. Producing companies are listening. Increasingly, they examine their product chain much more thoroughly, shipping included. While many sustainable techniques and methods exist today, ships still produce many harmful emissions. Greenhouse gases, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, and many others end up in the air. Waste, heavy chemicals from anti-fouling, cleaning agents, and lubricants end up in our oceans. Legal regulation is, unfortunately, too slow to address these problems. The Clean Shipping Index goes beyond environmental regulations of today. This is how it works. Carriers fill in a list of 20 easily answerable questions about the different ships in their fleet. On the other side of the line, cargo owners can, with a few mouse clicks, compare the environmental performance of the shipping companies. Information can be viewed not only for an entire fleet or a single ship, but also just a specific issue of choice, like CO2, for instance. Readouts are easy. Total scores are shown in red for low performance, yellow for medium performance, and green for high performance, which is pretty hard to get. Leading cargo owners like Volvo, H&M, Tetra Laval and many others are already participating. 19 of the 20 largest global container carriers have entered environmental data into the index. Probably your company already has a corporate social responsibility policy in place. The Clean Shipping Index is an easy, affordable tool to expand your CSR policy into the oceans. When your customers know you are doing your part in the global effort towards a healthier planet, that's good for the overall brand perception and therefore also a wise business decision. And when you decide to join the frontrunners of today, you become part of a growing group of companies and organizations that think about the long term, beyond the confines of their company grounds, with both their common sense as well as their hearts. Okay, so I hope you, you enjoyed that. A few more words for the, for the time we, uh, we have left. Um, so yeah, clean shipping. W what is clean shipping? So uh, there's a lot of different definitions out there on the, on the market. For me, clean shipping means that you sail with a, with a clean ship. A ship that does everything it can to, uh, to mitigate environmental impact. Um, this is also what the developers of the index in Sweden uh, did. They, uh, they were really literally researched on, on board of several ships that called the port of Gothenburg and looked into the possibilities of improving uh, the environmental footprints of those vessels. 
and they turned those, all the good things that they saw on, on board these vessels, turned that into criteria, clean shipping criteria, which they then uh, uh, have first put into a, a, an Excel spreadsheet and asked ship owners to fill in how they relate to these criteria. Um, several cargo owners showed interest in, in, into this, for example, uh, Tetra Pak, uh, Volvo, <laughs> some others that, you, that you've seen uh, on, on screen. And they wanted to use this information actually when, uh, when contracting uh, carriers for transporting their cargo. Because it's in, the end, in the end, it's the, the, the cargo owners that, that, that have the cargo and, and uh, have a lot of uh, buying power, actually. So this uh, scoring in, in five areas, uh, sulfur, uh, particulate matter, uh, nitrogen oxide, CO2, uh, chemicals, and water and waste. Especially if you look at uh, those two, chemicals and water and waste, there's quite a lot of low-hanging fruit to be achieved in the shipping business. If you, for example, look at this picture, here's the, the propeller. You have a stern tube going out from the ship. There's, there's oil needed in order to lubricate that. Uh, usually when a ship is about six, six years old, you get a little bit, a little bit of, uh, uh, it gets a bit warped. So you get leakage of oil into the oceans. Just normal operational leakage of oil. Uh, about seven liters per vessel per day. It's not much on, on a single ship, but if you look at it on, uh, on the whole fleet or all the vessels that sail in, in the Baltic Sea, it's, it's quite an oil, oil spill. And it's unnecessary because you can have uh, bio loops that you can use. They're, they're not that much more expensive. And, uh, and you can still improve your, your performance. Of course, if you, you look into the, the air emissions uh, uh, mitigating scrubbers, that, that's another story. There it gets, gets more expensive to, uh, to become better. Uh, this is how it, how it looks like into uh, our database. So all the information from the, from the ships is gathered in a database. Currently, we have about uh, 2,000 vessels indexed. Um, the different environmental parameters are shown in a, in a spider chart, as you can see here. And the wider the inner chart goes, the, the better the score of that vessel uh, is in our index. And all this information is, uh, is being displayed uh, and opened to a network of major customers of the shipping industry. So the project started in Sweden back in, uh, in 2007. So you see uh, a lot of Swedish companies that are still uh, dominating the, the, the network. Volvo Logistics, uh, Prim Oil, Absolute Company. It's a mix of different sectors also. So you see clothing companies, oil companies. Uh, and, and recently we're now also trying to reach out to other countries. So I helped uh, in the Netherlands, because I am, I am from, uh, from Holland, to get companies like Philips uh, in uh, Ballas Nedam, DSM. And we're now also targeting the German market and would like to expand more in the, in the Baltic Sea region. So we're looking for companies that transport own cargo and, and transport it across the Baltic to join our network uh, in order to uh, stimulate clean shipping. Some uh, a testimonial uh, in order to see that it works uh, from Tetra Park, their uh, global uh, su supply and uh, logistics manager. They really look into the data and if they see something, uh, what they don't like, they bring it to the negotiation table with the ship owner and ask them to, uh, to improve. So this is really a way to bring ecology or environmental considerations into day-to-day -day, uh, economic decision-making by those uh, transport buyers. So can clean Baltic shipping make money? Um, in the long term, I would say yes. Why? Because of you and me, because the consumers in the world they really uh, ask better quality products. They expect companies to ha behave in a, in a responsible and environmentally friendly way. And through there, through the customers of the shipping industry, I think we can really create a, a further market demand for, for clean shipping. Okay. Thank you. This was uh, my speech.